Hello, welcome to Geeks Assembled Audio Heads. That's us, Audio Heads. We've listened to another mm, wonderful audio story. Mm, yes, um, of a time traveler. No, not Doctor Who. Oh my gosh, Graham. That's Graham McLaughlin's thing. Drunky G. Oh my gosh, he does all those audio who's. We're doing another time traveler. A guy who built a time machine in the Victorian times. And it's by H.G. Wells. So good. Anyway, and not H.G. Wells that was in the Seventh Doctor Adventure or the Sixth Doctor Adventure, but like in other H.G. Wells. Anyway, uh, so that's what we've done. And uh, these two blokes and me, we've got to talk about it. So um, just let it let it all hang out there lee to let me know what you think uh, we, do, we, I, we don't want to get banned so i'm not going to let it all hang out um but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it was an enjoyable just over two hours long um which is quite long enough for these sort of audios um well put together you know production wise sound you know sound wise um okay yes everybody knows by now i'm not a fan of narration but this is the only way i can see this story being told because it is a sort of a one-hander story it's about it's the story about the time traveler so yes it has to be narrated that way yeah i you know i put my hands up i'll say yeah this time i'll go with it um yeah it's fairly you know, close adaptation to the book. Uh, what, as far as I can remember, it's been a while since I read the Time Machine. But yeah, I sat down, put it on, and time flew by, shall we say. Pardon the pun. But um, yeah, beginning to end, I was engrossed. It took me there. It took me to the future. It took me to see the, uh, you know, the Morlocks and stuff like that. Yeah, a very, very good audio, in my opinion. So. That's my opening thought, Susan. Very good, Lee. Thank you. Uh, Tim, what do you think about the time machine? I thought it was great. Um, I'm not familiar with the story at all, although I vaguely recall seeing bits of the, the 1960 film way back in the day when I was a kid. I just remember the, the little blue men running around, but uh, uh, it, it was a very good story. I mean, um, really interesting. I mean, that, that he travels in time but not really space i mean so he stays where he is in other words so he goes to the future where his home is no longer there it's interesting that the future uh mankind has degenerated a bit into lesser creatures i guess or the way he projects it is that that two species one vile and violent and cruel and the other practically a, a bunch of hippies so i mean it's it's uh it's interesting that that's what they did that uh, that that's how the future would be I thought it was striking too when he goes to the far future, the, the end of the, the the world, basically. And I guess this was written before the time they realized that the sun would expand and engulf the planets. Because in other words, this world, this Earth, has a different ending, in a way that, than. But I mean, really, uh, Wells is really ahead of his time uh, with all of these stories that we've covered. He really comes up with some unique and amazing ideas, and it's a pity that that. Um, he didn't write more. I, th I think it's uh, cool too how how the, the ending of the story is pretty ambiguous, almost as if he set it up to like follow up on it at some point, but he never did, which is fine. I mean, I, I don't mind an ambiguous ending. I think that's it's pretty cool how you don't know if the guy's ever going to return. Did he ever find his his girlfriend? I mean, it's, it's just like it's all up in the air at the end of the story. So it's it's a, it's a really good entertaining uh, story, and I think as always, Big Finish did a great job with it. Yeah, I agree. And um, I'm just going to go through the cast and um, sort of sort out what, what you guys thought of this. What did you guys think of Ben Miles? Lee? He played the time traveler. That's the story about it because I was just going to say, who did he play? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um... As I said, yeah, it's the only way to do this story is through the narration because it's through his eyes that the story is being told. Um, yeah, he, he played it well. Um, 
as as Tim, I remember the movie back in the sixties. Uh, I took things from the book, put this in it. Um, yeah, he did a, a cracking job as the time traveller. Um, he, the way he told the story, uh, you know, the, the, the parts where he, he saw sunrises and sunsets and the, the buildings disappear, the surrounding, all that description, it was just wonderful how he did it. Um, and as I say, when he, he met the um, the, uh, the future human be, uh, human race, um, maybe, maybe I think we're, we're starting down that route now, Tim. Uh, we are gonna we are degenerating into that now. I think um, <laughs> a bunch of hippie, a bunch of hippies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 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 he was a, a very good. Um, he was cast well in that in that role. I think. What about you, Tim? Yeah, he's a very good actor. I don't recall hearing him or seeing him anything else. He, he had that kind of Hugh Bonneville sound to him, uh, and I almost. Ended up Double, a couple of times thinking maybe that was him, but I knew it wasn't. I mean, they they can't afford him at big finish, I wouldn't think. But uh, it's uh, it, it's a very good part. It's a very good. He did a very good job. Like Lee said, it, it's 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 pretty much eighty percent narration, um, and he's he's ta- he's telling his his, his uh, these stories to his friend, and it, it's I don't know. It's a lot more satisfying than I think that 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 Frankenstein was. Uh, not that you need to compare the two, but I mean, I, this is an actual likable likable protagonist. He's not. He's amazed by what he sees. He's not. He's not nearly as judgmental uh, as, for for example, the guy from uh, Moreau, the Doctor Moreau story. That guy. He wasn't very likable, was he? The protagonist. This guy's actually a likable guy, and he just goes on his journey and is amazed by what he sees and takes it all in and is is, is confounded. I mean, and it's it's a very good, it's a very good character. I think um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm really surprised that over the years nobody's ever followed up on it, like as a you know a sequel type thing because that's what we live in a world of sequels nowadays or you know reimaginings you would think that somebody would have picked up the glove and ran with it but it's all right but yeah the, the cast in this is, uh, overall is amazing yeah the the guy what the, his his the guy he's telling the story to though um i mean he's got a strange name you know mr wells yeah he's supposed to be wells himself right yeah or tim wells no just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. It, I, I got it from the extras, I guess, that, that Wells is recounting this man's tale. Right. Which is why he's like the outro narrator. Like, he narrates some bits, and then he's the guy that finishes the story, I guess, in a way. Also, very good job, though. Very good. I don't know. Which, which actor was that? Nicholas Rowe. Hmm. And I don't remember him, but um, the other actor, actors and actresses were Angela... Uh, Macintosh, who, who she played Uina, and Nicholas Asbury played Mr. Philby, and James Joyce played Mr. F- Mr. Pollock, and Highwell Morgan played the Morlock leader. It's and, a very, a very, it's a very small cast. Yeah, Christopher uh, Naylor played Mr. Naylor. Yeah. Oh, that 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 was cool. How how that worked out. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, I enjoyed it, too. I thought that the cast did a really good job, and and Ben did a really amazing performance as the time traveler. Funny how nobody ever, the, the, the names are never given for real time travelers in this world, anyway. Um, fun. It was great to, it was great to hear the how you know how, how two people without language became able to speak or communicate with one another and and then hit on one another and then you know it was it was all romance it's just, after that. It's, it's just it's just like when we do our casts oh oh really <laughs> oh, oh, er. get in there bang <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, okay. Any, any. Uh, I I gave my like little uh, favorite moment was 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 that that you know that trans linguistic trans temporal romance. Anybody else have a have a 
favorite point? Um, well, as I say, apart from the, as you say, the, the scenery changing all around him, scripted so well. Uh, going to the ending of, of the story, as uh, Tim's sort of pointed out, with the ambiguous ending, um, that the, the sort of the last ten minutes, where he just he ups and goes and leaves leaves uh, Mr. Wells there, and nobody knows what's happened to him. He could be, you know, he could have gone into the future, he could have gone into the past, or whatever. He could have, he could be dead, he could be alive. He, uh, he seems very annoyed that his friends have showed up at his house. He's like, because he, he's. It wasn't clear that he was actually going to leave again. His friend Wells is trying to talk him out of it, and then all the yeah. other people start trying to say that they don't believe his story or whatever. Well, and he just yeah, well, takes off. Yeah, well, well, Wells in the end didn't believe him uh, until he yeah. disappeared again. Yeah, it, I think that's what was the uh, turning point for him. That he said, mm -hmm. "Oh well, you do, I've told you my story. You don't believe me. I'm going." <laughs> sort of thing it, it's just really well told I mean the first time it is sighting of the Morlocks that's so well well done you know descriptive spooky spooky yeah 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 I like the I like the bit where he loses his time machine I thought that was kind of cool yeah, you never, you never want to do that. Uh, you don't want to do that. Well, it was, it, it, they made they on audio. They made the Morlocks kind of scary because all you would see was was their eyes, and you didn't know. And then, then the bit where he gets to the bit where it's just the, like a limb on the table, and he realizes what they are, and that that you know, it's it's like two opposites. Like I said, you got two two uh, two uh, species that have evolved from humans apparently, and one is the peaceful vegetarians, and the other is the the um, you know the really evil cannibalists. So I mean, it's it's an interesting future that that cooked up here for him to. And, and again, I don't think he's. I think again, he's he's much more of a likable character than than some of the previous ones because he he kind of takes it all in. And he's not too judgmental. He just knows he doesn't dig these morat guys too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. Any anything you want to criticize about this? I can't think of anything. I thought it was. I thought it was amazingly good story. Well done. Very yeah. well done. You, yeah. Go ahead. It, it, yeah. It was, so I agree. It's well done. And, um, usually, I would compl complain about complain until I'm blue in the face about the narration, but I can't complain about this one because, okay. as, I, as I said, I think it's that. I think that's it's that's a, a necessary evil. Yeah, it's yeah. a necessary evil sometimes when you're doing audio. I mean, you have to. It's um, if this was a film, and it's 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 it seemed it was very filmic. The sound of it, it almost felt like you were listening to a movie, but um, it, it, it's it's. I, I thought it was very well done. I mean, sometimes you're right. Sometimes too much narration can get in the way, or you just like. But it, it's got to be hard to to get these scenes moving, just in sound only, without and especially when it's a guy on his own for a lot of the time, you know. Or if, if his only companion is this is this girl that doesn't really speak English, so she just makes sounds. So you have to like get. You have to get the point across. So, yeah, I agree with you though. It's good. Yeah. Translinguistic romance and, and conversations are are a trip. Um, yeah. Some of my favorite mo like moments in in all media is when is when people who don't speak the same language or don't you know understand each other are coming together. And you know, anyway, that that's super fun. So. Uh, let's, because there's only three of us here, is there anything else that we got, we'd like to say about this? Uh, well, it's, it's some of a, a comic book Tim made earlier, but it's nothing to do with the, uh, this story. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Bonneville, he has been in Big Finish. Oh. 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 Uh, I think, oh, well, uh, if uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure he has been, but I mean, I guess what I'm saying is maybe <laughs> nowadays he probably doesn't uh, have time. He's kind of yeah. all over the place, isn't he? So well, that's that's about most actors these days. But yeah, was, I was just racking my brains when you were talking. I'm so sure he has been. <laughs> Angelus Guitar, which one was he in? Was. Angelus Guitar, I think. I think we so. did that one before. Yeah, yeah. I don't recall him being, but I'm there positive you go. that one. I mean. <laughs> have to look it up google it <laughs> <laughs> Meet your friend okay um no all, I, I, all but, I can say is this this was good i'd like to Sorry, i'd like to I'm just you know sh like share i i think that this was 
uh, a richer tapestry than some of the motion pictures I've seen. I've seen probably uh, five, four or five versions of the the time machine in in film, and I I really um, I really love this one. This one was this one was pretty great in comparison. Um, well. Well, the, the, the tapestry you're using for this is your imagination, and your imagination works wonders um, far better than visuals what I've put in front of you. There's that, yeah. There is that, yeah. That's the tapestry you work with, with audio. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's rate it. And stuff. Okay. Tim, what did you think? And give us a final say in rating and and. Well, I think it's an excellent story that w was given an excellent job by Big Finish. I think that, that that I don't think they could have made it any better. I mean, I hate to just hand out tens willy nilly, but I do think it it was it was uh it was an excellent production of a very good story. I mean, and I think I have to give it a ten because I don't see there's how they could have done it any better. You know, I think that they did a great job of, 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 of getting it done and getting it done economically. It's not too long. It's really just about two hours, which is which is very good. I mean, you know, we've done longer stories before and sometimes they don't need to be that long. So, I mean, this this, this is good. This is very good. So I'm going to give it a 10. Thank you, Tim. How about you, Lee? What what would you give this? Uh, Gina, Gina, I just can't believe this. Group. Dude, we, 10 every time, isn't it? We just throw 10s on everything. As certain people would say. Um, <laughs> of course, it's a 10. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> okay. let, them say, let them say if they are okay. <sighs> all right. Well, it, well, if people have commented uh, that, that all we do is throw 10s at things, it's because we choose these things. And we, we really do enjoy these things. And I'll give this one a 10 out of 10, too. And uh, I just think that it was a great story. It's, it is, I, I enjoy time travel stories more than, more than other forms of science fiction. Um, I do, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it has a better sort of... Uh, just, you, you, you have more things to play with more things to play with and and yeah. more danger and yeah all sorts of, of the uh, yeah you, of the unknown you, you're journeying into the unknown yeah yeah so just like our cast we're glad we did this and um uh we might would you would you fellas like to do a torchwood story Okay, well, we're going to choose a Fortnite story and come back in a fortnight. And uh, thank you very much for watching our, our little podcast here. Um, like us, subscribe, please subscribe, and have all of your friends subscribe. And, uh, and you know, if you make friends on the internet and, and let them let them know about this it's fun yeah and if and you subscribe if you subscribe we'll be your friends forever that's true we'll, we'll come round and we'll walk your dogs for you we'll do the washing for you you know we'll ma make you a cup of tea yes yes we'll rub your feet oh yes and... tim no t tim's tim's not a feet, footman okay <laughs> all right um yeah so give us give us your advice um and and let us know about your experiences with hg wells and, and the time machine it's a really amazing story so just let us know what you think of it and what and whether and where you've seen it or heard it or whatever and um and tell us about your experience with time travel if you if you're a time traveler yourself <laughs> uh and w in all seriousness do let us know 
uh, what we can do to make make your podcast viewing more fun. Anyway, this has been us. Thanks for watching. Good night.